Okay, so um, today we're gonna do an immediate implant. This is an extraction socket, recent, recent extraction socket, and we're planning to place an implant. And these are the drills that we will be using. This is the initial drill. This is the 2.3 drill. 2.8 3.5 and the last one which is called countersink at some point we might need drill extender so we save it these on the side but we might need drill extender so we're gonna start with the initial drill and when we look at the lengths of the drill we have the first apical line at 6 millimeters 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 so this is the extraction socket and we want to measure right after the extraction how deep is the root of the molar we want to check if it's the distal root or if it's the mesial root and we can see that it's about the last coronal line is 16 14 12 10 10 millimeter so the mesial root measures about 10 millimeter length and we will try to drill two extra millimeters so we will drill 12 millimeters and this is gonna be our reference point this is the type of implant that we have to place and if we look sideways This is how it should look like once it is in place. This implant is a 10 millimeter implant. So from apex to the last coronal thread, it's 10 millimeters and we're gonna drill two extra. So that way we can play with the position of the crown margin. So we drill 12, this is 10, and then we have two extra millimeters to keep on screwing depending on the occlusal space and depending on the bone geometry. Drilling speed, I recommend 1500, 1200. So we're gonna drill at 1200 and we have to make sure we are staying in the center of the two roots and the bone should be stable. If the Inter radicular bone is broken after extraction you should graft and come back afterwards so we're going to start drilling in the septum and we will try to have as much stable as possible uh, contra angle Before we keep on drilling all the way to the end, we want to make sure our drilling direction is correct. So we put the drill in the center of the socket and we check if we like our drilling direction. We don't want to be more too distal, we don't want to be too mesial. So the drilling direction is correct and we keep on drilling. Again, we're gonna drill 12 millimeters.
we're gonna go with the next drill this will be 2.3 millimeter in the center of the septum it's gonna be every time we increase diameter of drill it's gonna be more difficult to have stability so if that is the case if your drill doesn't go into the osteotomy then we go back to the initial drill and we make a bigger hole by moving the drill buckle and lingual so 2.3 drill this is the 2.3 and again we're gonna go and drill as center as possible to the socket this is how the drilling is looking like and we again check the direction of the drilling so we like the drill is stable it's not moving it's stable so we keep on increasing the diameter now we're gonna go with 2.8 We need to drill deeper. Perfect. So we increase 3.5 right now. Sixteen, fourteen, twelve, twelve millimeters. We check again if we like the direction of the drilling. It's a very stable location and good placement, occlusal view. So we increase now all the way to 4.2 and this is gonna be our last twist drill 4.2 at this moment we can drill to 1200 rpm or we can drill slower and collect the bone particles without irrigation and maybe mix it afterwards with bone graft so it's up to you whether you would like to drill and then graft or you like to mix with some bone particles you must not irrigate and no suction so when you're drilling slowly you you can collect 
bond particles. You can mix these particles with the bone graft, so you will have a much faster healing. Okay, so then we would collect this bone and use it. And then now comes the important part. This is the countersink and the countersink has exactly the same uh, shape as the implant on the transgingival portion area. On the threaded area, the countersink is a little bit smaller than the implant, but at the gum level, thickness we have the same diameter so if we try to place the countersink into the hole we can see that it's not gonna go down too deep so we must use the countersink to make some adjustment on the interproximal bone and also interradicular bone and that's what we will do again drilling speed 1200 and very little amount of pressure if we do too much pressure the countersink is gonna bounce too much so very little amount of pressure 1200 rpm More or less, this is how the countersink should look like on the when you are done with the osteotomy. So you can take out the countersink from the socket and place it into the bone. And this is more or less the position of the countersink once you are done with the osteotomy. If the countersink is this high, you must drill deeper. So this is the ideal positioning of the countersink once you're done with the osteotomy. So now we are ready to place the implant. Uh, Serra root 16, 10 millimeters, and it's an implant specifically designed for molars. You should place in the molar region for a single tooth you should place big diameter implants like the Serra Root 16. Okay. So we go ahead and open the implant. And at this point, if you want, you can change your gloves so you are having new gloves with a sterile implant so this is gonna be sterile container and you can go ahead and unscrew the implant and you bring the implant like this screwing down the implant until the implant is stable enough and so go ahead and remove this cap and you bring the short driver or the long driver so we choose this at this moment we choose the long one and we assemble the thumb wheel on top of the driver and we start screwing down the implant as tight as we can
then we can see there is a um, laser mark on the buckle of the driver this laser mark is gonna show us where the buckle positioning of the implant because the implant has a buckle and lingual flat walls so we're gonna keep on screwing and we're gonna look at the positioning of the line buckle line so every time we decide to go in we have to think that we can do 180 when the implant is tight enough then we are ready to bring the wrench on top of it so we have to read in and start screwing down the implant right now I already have 35 newtons and no threads out and at this moment we would take all the parts out and we would look at the occlusal space so we would tell the patient to bite down and we would inspect how the implant looks like if we have enough clearance and all the threads are covered and we don't need more occlusal space this is how the implant should look like if you wanna do one or two more degrees rotation to have a perfect alignment that's what you can do so you go ahead and you place the wrench and you do so now you have buckle wall the buckle wall of the apartment facing buckle and the lingual facing lingual now if for some reason you don't have enough occlusal space and you already have too much torque I suggest that you bring the countersink in the socket and drill deeper so what we would do is we would remove the implant We would remove the implant and bring the countersink deeper than this. Otherwise, the implant is not going to go down. Okay, so I hope you like it. Thank you very much for watching.